hi guys this is umair back with another video in this video i'm going to be talking about very important angular topic which is life cycle hooks every angular developer needs to be able to understand how and when to use these life cycle hooks so in this video i'll be explaining you how to write different uh, life cycle hook methods and where to use it and why to use these life cycle hooks let's get started i'll be explaining you with different uh, practical examples these are all the life cycle hooks that comes very handy in terms of resolving a lot of issues and bugs uh, when we intend to develop big applications before starting i just want to let you guys know that i built a course on angular and loop back a month ago and uh, i'm gonna give you ten dollar coupon for my course in the description of this video it, it is uh, currently eighty dollar course and i'm gonna give you a ten dollar coupon just go ahead and my course is labeled hot and new and the rating of my course has been pretty good which is you can see 4.6 and i have got a lot of good reviews on my course you are going to learn a lot of good topics in angular in terms of best practices and loop back which is the node.js framework for building the apis and build a complete website from scratch so go ahead and roll this course and utilize the coupon that i've given to you in the description below so i'll start off with ng on changes because this is the first lifecycle hook that gets executed and all other lifecycle hooks gets executed after this so i have created a default project uh, which is angular 8 and uh, i have named it angular hooks and it contains default component which is app component and this is the output of this project so for ng on changes we need to create a parent child components because this is where uh, we can utilize this lifecycle hook so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to create a child component so in my terminal i'm using vs code so i'm gonna write nggc and uh, i'm gonna create components folder and i'm gonna name the child component as child and i'm gonna hit enter so it's gonna create a folder here and uh, it's going to build all these files and uh, it's typescript and the html file all right so this is the child component that will be used within the parent component which is app component so now uh, in the app component i'm going to open up app component and uh, i'm going to remove this title and i'm going to create a variable and i'm going to name it number which is of type number and i can give it any number okay and let me go to app.component.html and here i'm just gonna remove all this html let me just end it with the div and uh, within this h1 i'm just going to write my app and uh, after this h1 i'm going to create another div and uh, i can actually bind this variable over here but what i'm gonna do is i'm going to use this child component and send the data to this child component and uh, use that within ng on changes lifecycle hook so uh, what i'm gonna do is rather than actually using this particular variable as public variable for this class I'm going to use assessors that will be responsible for setting and getting the data for this particular variable. So first of all, I need to encapsulate this particular variable and for that I can just simply write private. And after that, uh, I can write down different getters. So get counter and I'm going to write this dot number. And for setting it i'm just going to write set and i'm going to call it value and this dot number dot value all right and after that i need to make these variables change its value and uh, for that i'm gonna add different buttons over here but first of all let me gonna create different functions so this is for increment 
this dot counter plus plus I can actually directly increment this number by writing this dot number but within this component I am directly using these getters and setters uh, to actually make any changes to these variables okay that's a good practice so now I'm going to write decrement and I'm going to just hit minus minus all right so uh, this dot number equals actually it's a value all right so I'm gonna go and open up the HTML file and inside it I'm just going to use app child this is the child component this is it and uh, I'm going to pass it a value that is going to be received within the child component so the variable that I will be creating in the child component let's say my new number and uh, inside this uh, double quotes uh, rather than actually using this variable I can't use it because it is private I can use this public counter which is the get so I can simply write counter over here all right so now uh, this is going to be passed to it so for calling these two increment and decrement functions let me just create two buttons so I'm going to call it click and uh, decrement I'm calling this decrement function and uh, I'm just going to name it subtract and I'm just going to copy this line and I'm going to paste it over here and I'm going to name it increment addition make sure there is no spelling mistakes between this increment and decrement all right and uh, now let's open up that child component and uh, in the component.ts file of this child component I need to receive this particular value so I need to create a variable with this particular name all right so let me open up it and uh, for that let me import an input decorator and that would be responsible for creating a variable over here so i can simply write at input and uh, i can name it my new number and uh, which is of type number okay so this variable is going to receive the value coming from here so for actually checking it if it's coming from here or not let me just bind this variable in the HTML and see if it is getting printed or not so rather than actually using p tag I'm using h2 and uh, within the double curly braces I'm just going to write my new number Okay. and now let me run this project and see if the values that are coming from this parent component uh, over here is being reflected to the child component and the changes of that uh, integer value this particular number getting reflected within the child component or not so now uh, let me just uh, reload this page there is an error let me go to inspect open up this console and it says that can't bind my new number since it hasn't a noun property app child all right so let me save all these files so actually files were not saved so that's why it was giving me an error so you can see this is the value that is coming from the parent component but we are outputting this particular value in our child component over here so the printing of our value coming from parent component is being done now let's say that I click on any of this button it's going to decrement or increment this particular variable and once it gets decrement or increment it should pass out to this child component and it should 
actually reflect the change within this HTML file. So let me just click on subtract and you can see it is subtracting. Let me just addition. So it is adding one to this particular value. So our communication between two components is working fine. So now uh, let's use ng on changes lifecycle hook and uh, see how it works and why we need it. So now uh, in this child component, I need to actually import few more things. So I need to use on changes, simple change and simple changes. And these are uh, actually used to contain the previous value, current value. Whenever a new value comes into this component, we actually need to uh, get the values. What were the current and previous values? So these. Uh, packages actually used to contain those values. So now, along with on init, I also need to implement on changes. Okay, so it is saying me quick fix. Uh, let me just write down it myself. So ng on changes, and uh, I'm going to just write changes, simple changes. all right so this is the parameter that it's going to receive you can see error has gone all right i have written it above ng on init because ng on changes executes before ng on init and we're gonna see if i'm uh, true or not so uh i'm going to actually first of all let me just make this variable private and make its a uh, value accessed from assessor which is going to be set and get all right so now i'm going to change its name to my number and uh, i'm going to make it private and uh, after this constructor just like i wrote input decorator along with this variable i can use input decorator with set assessor uh, so uh, i'm going to write input and uh, I can write set my new number, which is same as this one, because I need to bind this particular setter uh, with that uh, variable used in HTML file. So here, I'm just going to pass out a number, which is of type number. And uh, this dot my number equals to number. Okay, and I need to get it as well. So my new number return this dot my number. So now it will work fine as it is uh, because uh, this particular value is being coming from here, but not from my number because it is private. It can't be accessed outside this class. All right. So now uh, I need to use this ng on changes. So whenever any change comes from the parent component, this particular lifecycle hook gets triggered. So first of all, actually using this variable, let me first log it and see if uh, something is printed or not something came inside it okay so let me save it and now you can see this has been printed because uh, first time whenever component gets initialized uh, this hooks gets uh, triggered and after that this hooks gets triggered ng on in it now if i click on addition you can see something came inside is being uh printed over here so if i click on subtract uh, this is being printed so you can see ng on init only executed for once but ng on changes executed whenever any change comes from the parent component to a variable that is receiving a value using input decorator okay so now let's use this changes variable okay so const and uh, 
new number change and I'm going to give it a type simple change okay so changes dot my new number okay and uh, I'm using this uh, my new number getter for getting the value and uh, now let me just print out it and uh, log and I'm going to write previous value ng on changes and uh, new number change dot previous value okay this is a variable that is built in within this simple chain this is an object and whenever we create a variable with this type we will receive previous value and current value coming from that particular change okay i'm going to copy it and i'm going to change it current value ng on changes let me just remove it and let me just update this particular variable uh, with the current value rather than the previous value okay so i'm using this uh, setter i can directly change its value directly writing this name but i'm going to use this setter so this dot my new number equals to new number changes dot current value so let me just print out the current value as well just copying and pasting all right okay so now let's go to browser and you can see uh, it printed out previous value which was undefined because uh, there was no previous value that came inside the child component okay uh, but when we click on any of these values it will print again and now you can see this is the previous value this is the current value and uh, this is how we can actually receive the old values and new values using ng on changes now sometimes you get into a problem that uh, you are actually using a child component and uh, you are changing its value but ng on in it doesn't get executed and you are doing a lot of logic and initialization and you want it to be executed but what you can do is you can use this lifecycle to actually detect these changes okay so now let me just copy it and paste it over here and i'm just going to remove previous value from here and previous value from here and uh, inside it uh, i'm just going to let me just remove it ng on init value so this dot my new number okay now let's see which lifecycle executes before so let's go and now you can see previous value current value executed before ng on init so this shows it was executed before ng on init okay now if i click on addition or subtraction there is no ng on in it it means this has been initialized only once so this life cycle executes only one time but this executes every time any change come from that parent component and this particular variable that gets changed okay so one thing i want to mention here is that let me just go ahead and create another variable within the app component and uh, I'm not gonna create setters or getters for it just to elaborate to guys and I'm going to name it Omer and I'm going to pass this name to my child component just like it so I'm going to name it my number two which i'm gonna create in the child component and i'm going to pass out name which is the variable that i have just created okay so within the child component let me just create my number two and which is of type string okay so i'm gonna 
use a debugger over here because I want my execution of program to get stopped over here and uh, I'm gonna print out my number two actually it's not a number it's just a name uh, it's just a mistake in naming the variable but that's fine so there is an error and uh, to resolve this error make sure all the files are saved the reason it is not receiving it because um, I use this input decorator with this setter so I need to use input decorator with this variable because I have not created setter or getter for this particular variable so I'm going to write input and now it should receive this value and now this debugger should uh, stop the execution now it has been stopped now let hover over changes and see what uh, variables are coming to it you can see it it is receiving my new number and current value is this previous value undefined because there was no previous value first change is true so it means that uh, this change occur first time coming from the parent component to this child component and second variable which is my number two which is umair and uh, it is also first change previous value undefined okay so i let it go now let me just uh, click on addition or subtraction and see what value is coming to this changes variable if i click on addition now if i hover over changes you can see there is only one object coming from uh, the parent component uh, which is being received within this simple changes object so if i open up it you can see there is a previous value there is a current value and first change is false because this is the second time this a variable has been changed the reason the second object which is my number two didn't came in this child component is because uh, that variable didn't change it remained same from the parent component its value didn't change so all the variables that are changed no matter if there are thousands of variables within the child component but only two variables gets changed this engine on changes and simple changes object uh, will only be receiving those variables which are being changed so it is good in terms of performance of the app so this is where you can use ng on changes lifecycle which is the longest life cycle in order to understand other life cycles are pretty easy to understand so once you get the idea of how to use ng on changes which executes at uh, first from all the life cycles so uh, it's going to be really helpful if you are building large application and uh, making a lot of components communicating with each other using input and output decorators so i hope that you have got the idea so next uh, uh, we have ng on init you already know uh, it executes after ng on changes and uh, for ng on init what you need to do is uh, you can actually use this particular life cycle in order to initialize the variables uh, uh, that needs to be used for other functions being written in that particular component whether it's a child component or parent component or a directive you just need to use ng on init lifecycle in order to uh, actually initialize all the variables no matter if it is input decorator or output decorator simple variables or arrays or object use ng on it only for that purpose so now i'm going to talk about ng do check it executes after ng on changes and ng on init life cycle so what is the purpose and when to use this particular life cycle so i'm going to use the same project and for using do check let me just import the do check and i'm going to implement it over here and also I need to write ng do check all right so uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna go open up app.component.ts and I'm going to make changes to this particular name variable okay so uh, I'm going to create a function update value 
and uh, this dot name equals to Ali so I'm making changes to the value of this particular variable and uh, I'm going to create a link a click update value and I'm going to name it update all right so this is the link so when I click on it it's going to call this function it's going to make changes to this particular variable and uh, here uh, let me just add a debugger let me add a debugger over here as well ng do check all right so now uh, let me refresh the page so let me check the changes so these are the two changes these are the same as we analyzed before uh, so three values first change current value there is no previous value which is undefined so i'm just let it execute and here it comes in ng do check i'll let it execute okay and uh, let me go to the console and uh, you can see it has printed previous value current value ng on init all right so now i'm gonna go click on addition and it has detected this change let me click on changes and uh, by clicking on addition it only changed this particular variable that's why this particular variable has come inside this particular uh, function ng on changes which is the life cycle okay let it go and ng do check so now uh, you can see a previous value current value have been printed and there is no ng on in it because it executed only when uh, this whole component got initialized okay uh, when we refresh the page it's going to initialize again so uh, I'm going to click on update now update link so I'm going to click on it so ng on changes have been uh, like triggered and now it has got the second variable because the second variable which is the name has been changed so uh, my number two this is the previous value Umayyad current value Ali so this is coming from obviously it's going to throw an error because we are storing the reference of my uh, new number okay but we are receiving my number and my number uh, does not have this particular variable my new number so it's going to throw an error so we can just ignore that so i'm just gonna go so you can see it has thrown an error because previous value of undefined because this variable did not have the reference to my new number because we didn't get my new number instead we got my number two okay so uh in this case this lifecycle hook got executed so now let me go back to the code and make some changes and inside it uh, rather than actually using this name i'm going to create another variable and i'm going to name it user and i'm going to give it name Umer. and uh, inside update value i'm just going to use this dot user dot name equals to ali okay uh, let me just remove it because this was an object now while uh, just passing the data like name i'm just going to pass this particular object rather than passing this name okay so user it's going to be received over here and uh, it is now being used as my number two dot name all right so let me just refresh this page again and now you can see we have got two values let it go let it go and uh, now you can see ng on init uh, and the previous value current value okay so now I'm going to click on addition and uh, I've got my new number so it's going to execute let me just go and go 
now if i click on update you will see it did not stopped within this ng on changes so it's quite interesting you might be shocked that earlier when i changed the value of name it got stopped like here i just changed the name but now i have changed the value of an object which is uh, being uh, the name of that key which is being stored in an object so nothing uh, any difference so why it didn't got stopped over here so uh, if i just hover over my number my number two sorry uh, it should actually show me the data which is coming from that parent component uh, which is the user okay so the reason it got stopped over here is because we have a concept of pass by value and the pass by reference so whenever any change gets detected using the passed by reference this ng on changes function or a life cycle won't get detect it okay it won't detect any value that gets changed uh, using the pass by reference but this particular ng do check will uh, be receiving the change so rather than using the debugger let me just use this dot my number two and uh, it's going to print out the value okay so let me just let it go and uh, let me open up the console edition stopped it should have printed this previous value current value and uh, this particular number and now if i click on update uh, you can see it has printed 2342 because uh, i've just printed uh, my number actually uh, let me print out my number two over here click on addition print it this omer previous value current value and if i click on update it only printed name ali because it didn't go into this ng on changes because it was passed by reference and this particular life cycle actually detected it's changed uh, and i have printed out uh, this uh, object if i click on update again it's going to print out again okay so uh, if I make any change to this particular variable like uh, let's say if I change uh, if I clone this particular variable and I change its address in the memory just like if I copy over here paste it and I change its Ali okay now it's not being passed by reference its value is not being changed uh, directly in the same memory location because i am recreating the whole new object and it is going to allocate its own memory in the ram so it's going to get triggered within this ng on changes so it's up to you how you want to use these life cycles okay i'm just giving you the scenarios and how to use it and when to use this what, what are the purpose of each and every life cycle okay so now uh, if i click on update you can see it has been stopped and this changes has actually detected because this is the current value which is ali this was the previous value which was omer and the reason it got detected by ng on changes uh, is because i uh, actually reinitialized the whole new user uh, variable with the whole new object so uh, the point here is uh, it's up to you how you want to use each life cycle and i have given you all the scenarios and all the conditions when you want to use what so i'm going to talk about ng after contact in it now it will execute only one time after this ng do check gets executed it won't execute second time until we refresh the whole page okay so i'm going to use the same project first of all uh, i'm going to make it like it because uh, i don't want to throw an error over here because this logic is for only this variable if i make any change to my number two 
it's going to detect change it's going to get triggered and it's going to come inside over here and this second line is going to throw an error uh, because we are not handling any if conditions because uh, for my number two so now uh, inside the child component it's pretty simple uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to copy the name of it from the list ng after content in it and uh, if you want to import it or implement it you it's up to you it's not necessarily to import there are few things like uh, ng on in it ng on changes to check these are the things that are required to be imported but uh, the lifecycle hooks that I'm gonna writing uh, now are not required to import actually okay so uh, inside it I'm just going to log it and I'm going just going to print a okay so let me save this file and let's see if it gets executed only once or not so if I refresh the page you can see that it printed out previous value current value so it went over here after that it printed ng on in it so it came on ng on in it and after that it should print uh, ng do check because uh, we are writing it on sequence so it printed over here yay and uh, now uh if i click on any of these buttons this particular hook won't actually execute it's just like ng on init so when to use this particular lifecycle hook it is actually used uh when we initialize every variable or any array or object in ng on init uh or we uh, perform our logic in these three lifecycle hooks and we want to uh, execute a function or make some calculation only once in the whole component no matter uh, if uh, any other value is going to get changed or we are doing any two-way data bindings we only want to make some changes only once in whenever this component gets initialized and we we'll write down that particular log logic in this particular lifecycle hook so it's pretty simple it's pretty straight away uh, whenever you need it for uh, executing only once you just need to write inside it or call that function which is performing that particular logic so now i'm going to talk about ng after content check it gets executed right after ng after content in it uh, once it gets executed we can actually execute this particular lifecycle hook uh, multiple times after ng do check uh, so let's see and uh, now I'm just going to write ng let me just copy the name and uh, for here console.log uh, this was executed after I'm just going to copy the name yes so now uh, it's going to get executed right after this yay and uh, you can see this was executed right after ng on init so uh, I just need to trigger out ng do check and see if this particular log gets printed in the console again or not so if i click on update you can see uh, it was executed and after that it just ignored this particular lifecycle hook and this particular lifecycle hook got executed so again if i click it again and again this particular lifecycle hook gets executed again it's pretty simple in terms of understanding it so when to use it actually we we can actually use this particular life cycle when we want to perform some actions uh, on the variables that are being changed under this ng do check life cycle hook so every time we make changes in this particular hook and we want to perform few more uh, actions 
uh, we can actually uh, use this particular lifecycle hook so it 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 got separated uh, because the first time this lifecycle hook get needs to get executed so in order to avoid its problem uh, uh, i think angular actually uh, introduce a new lifecycle hook uh, that can we can use in order to actually utilize it on the variables or initializations that is being changed in ng do check now let's talk about ng after unit so let's just copy it and uh, i'm going to paste it and i'm going to log this was executed after i'm just going to copy its name and uh, let's save it and uh, as usual i'm writing all these lifecycle hooks in sequence you must be known that uh, this hook should be executed after this particular lifecycle and this particular lifecycle used to get executed every time when we make any change to this particular child component but this ng after view unit is only going to get executed once after this particular lifecycle hook so ng after content checked so you can see this is the message that was executed if i click on update uh, you can see it didn't get executed so it's pretty straightforward but one important point that i think i need to address here is that uh, let's say that we have multiple grandchild components we have built that are being used uh, in the child component okay we are just using the grandchild components passing the data uh, in in those child components uh, so uh, all those child grandchild components uh, needs to get executed or initialized completely before this particular life cycle hook gets executed let's say if all those grandchild components include these life cycle hooks then all these lifecycle hooks of those grandchild components needs to be executed before this lifecycle hook of this child component uh, needs to be executed so the precedence of grandchild components and all those lifecycle hooks written on those grandchild components is uh, greater than this particular lifecycle hook so this is the important point of this lifecycle hooks uh, who can you need to understand and remember now let's talk about ng after view checked i'm just going to copy it let's go and paste over here you must have got the idea why we need to use this particular lifecycle hook and how many times it's going to get executed so it's going to get executed of every time after this particular lifecycle hook uh, so this particular lifecycle hook used to get executed multiple times after it so we need to click on update link and so we need to check if this lifecycle hook gets executed or not so i'm just going to copy this name paste it let me go and uh, it was executed if i click on update you can see it has uh, been executed again if i click on update it has been executed again so according to my experience why we should use this particular lifecycle hook is because uh once all the child components grandchild components gets executed all the lifecycle hooks of grandchild components gets executed uh, uh this and this particular lifecycle hook initialize all the variables that are required and once uh, the child component gets executed and all the variables are initialized you can actually use this particular lifecycle hook uh, to proceed further and make calculations again and again whenever we make any change or pass any data to this particular component because it's going to get executed multiple times so this uh, is i think the best reason uh, we can use if you think there are other reasons that we can use this uh, lifecycle hook for uh, just uh, write the comment below and let me know what are the other purposes that we can use this hook for now let's talk about the last lifecycle hook in angular which is ng on destroy 
so let's just copy it and uh, i'm just going to paste it over here so ng on destroy lifecycle hook is used when our component is going to get destroyed it means uh, if the html is going to get removed from the dom so let me just give you an example we can actually use this particular lifecycle hook when we need to unsubscribe or we need to destroy all the content from the page of that particular component so here we are actually using that particular child component okay and uh, let me just define a boolean variable is visible and uh, i'm just going to call it true and uh, i'm going to uh, switch visibility okay this dot is visible equals to not this dot is visible okay when when this variable is going to get false it's going to be initialized with true when it's going to get true it's going to be initialized with false so i'm just going to copy this variable name make sure you uh, just save all the files and uh, where we are using this particular component I can simply write njf and I can simply write is variable okay so let me just uh, copy it component has been destroyed okay so let me save all these files let's go to browser and now you can see that message has not been called uh, so our component is loading okay so now uh, where I'm going it's it's it this function needs to get called switch visibility I haven't created any uh, button yet so I'm just going to copy this particular button and uh, I'm going to paste it over here and I'm just going to call this particular function show or height okay so let's save it and let's go and uh, if i click on show height you can see this message has been printed component has been destroyed you can see over here because uh, we can't see that particular component content on the page if i click on it again you can see all the component has been loaded so all the messages of that component are being shown as well if i click on that particular button again uh, we should see that component is going to get destroyed so if i click on again you can see this message has been printed again so uh, once the component gets destroyed and uh, we need to actually uh, initialize or perform something uh, like uh, perform some calculations or call some service functions before actually destroying the components so we can actually write that particular logic inside it or once uh, that particular uh, component is going to get destroyed we can actually emit the changed value from within the child component to the parent component we can use event emitter uh, if you know the output decorator it's just like the input decorator we can emit it inside ng uh, on destroy a particular lifecycle hook so guys uh, i hope that you are going to like this video it was pretty extensive uh, but i try to explain each and every point of all the lifecycle hooks that angular introduced in its framework uh, if you have any question make sure you write down in the comment below and uh, for more tutorials for all the technical tutorials in terms of mobile web development uh, desktop development apis development and database administrator and all the technical stuff make sure you hit the like button subscribe my channel and click on the bell icon for getting all the notifications and again just a reminder for you guys uh, make sure you check out the description and if you like my angular loopback course make sure you 
use that coupon and buy that course and learn more and more and become a full stack javascript developer